You know how your mother inspects vegetables you bring from the market, right? <laughs> Singapore inspects road materials with the same energy multiplied by 1000 and with actual science. Take the Marina Bay street circuit for example. You think it's just a road they close for F1? <laughs> Cute. This road leads a double life that would make Batman jealous. For 360 days, it handles regular traffic and for 5 days, it handles Ferraris doing 320 km per hour. The asphalt here isn't your regular mixed star and wish variety. It's a special compound that maintains grip at extreme temperatures while also being smooth enough to roll baby strollers. How smooth? Singapore's roads are ranked number one in the world. Let me repeat that for the people at the back. Number f***ing one. Meanwhile, India's roads are ranked. Uh, you know what? Let's not go there. My therapist says I need to focus on positive things. But the fact remains. They literally engineered a road surface that works for both Lewis Hamilton and the local cab driver doing Uber Eats. But here's the beautiful part. The same obsessive engineering applies to every single road, not just their Formula 1 track. Like I said, Singapore ranks number one globally in road quality with a QRI score of 6.5 out of 7. What is my Gadkari army doing? Number 51 with a score of 4.4. Man, I'm gonna... I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear! Also, their citizens were surveyed to measure satisfaction with roads. 73% said excellent. Again, the highest on the planet. Meanwhile, in India, our citizen satisfaction score skyrockets to 73% when they place a few cement blocks loosely over a few neighborhood potholes after 43 follow-ups in 21 months. Why? Because they approach road building like it's rocket science. Which technically, it kind of is. Their roads have more layers than a Shah Rukh Khan emotional scene. The wearing course alone, just the top layer, is about 50 millimeters of asphalt. The total from top to bottom is over 1,200 millimeters thick. Damn boy, he thick! Indian roads? We have two requirements carpet style and black color. Black? What the fuck? That's it. That's the requirement. Don't believe me? Look for yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> the Formula One track asphalt they use can handle temperatures that would melt regular roads. It provides consistent grip whether it's a scorching afternoon or a wet night race. The same technology then trickles down to regular roads. Compaction density is basically how tightly packed your road is. They test compaction density at 95% minimum. Imagine making a roti, 95% density is when you've rolled it perfectly flat, no air bubbles. In India, we achieve 60% and call it tense enough. That's when your roti starts looking like a papad with commitment issues, full of air pockets wanting to become potholes. They maintain mixed temperatures at exactly 121 to 163 degrees Celsius during laying. These are not random numbers manifested by rubbing two healing crystals together under a banyan tree. If it's too hot, the bitumen burns and becomes brittle. If it's too cold, it won't spread properly like trying to spread cold butter on bread. The butter's too cold! The butter is too cold! Singapore maintains this temperature from the mixing plant to the road. In India, the asphalt leaves the plant hot, sits in traffic for three hours, arrives lukewarm and we dump it anyway because why waste? We already brought it, no? It is what it is. Singapore mandates laboratory testing for every batch of asphalt. India mandates laboratory testing for... Uh, actually, we don't mandate it at all. We suggest it, politely. If you feel like it, you know, no, no pressure, no pressure. Their quality control checklist has 47 parameters. Our checklist has two. Is it black enough? Did we get paid? Different priorities, different results. Now let's talk about red tape. In 1995, in 1995, Singapore did something revolutionary. They put all of transport planning under one agency, the Land Transport Authority. One agency for everything. Roads, buses, trains, traffic lights, your uncle's bicycle lane, everything. You know how many agencies handle roads in India? NHAI for highways, state PWDs for state roads, municipal corporations for city roads, panchayats for village roads, defense for cantonment roads, railways for road near stations, forest department for forest roads, port trust for port roads, I'm not done, BRO for border roads and CPWD for central government roads. <sighs> Each one with their own budget, their own contractors, their own spectacular incompetence. Except maybe cantonment boards, because I've never seen a pothole on cantonment boards. 
मैसिव डब्ल्यू फॉर आर मिलिट्री Singapore's Interagency Coordinating Committee has handled 43 complex cases since 2011. That's 43 cases in 13 years. Kill you. In India, we probably have 43 cases every day of different agencies fighting over who should fix that one pothole for a total tender value of 8.6 crores. But here's where it gets spicy. Singapore's corruption perception score for 2024 was 85 out of 100, number three in the world. India's score is 38. Number ninety six. For context, thirty eight is what happens when your anti-corruption bureau needs its own anti-corruption bureau. When Singapore allocates fourteen point six billion dollars for transport, that money goes to transport. What? In India, when we allocate one thousand crores for roads, it goes through more hands than a WhatsApp forward goes through phones of Indian uncles about how UNESCO has declared something crazy. Or should I say, the phones of aunties publishing first-hand reports of how NASA has adopted our ancient Sanskrit language to program their rockets. क्यों नहीं कोडिंग कोडिंग ही है संस्कृत तो कोड है ना कोड भी जितने भी इंजीनियर्स कर रहे हैं वो संस्कृत में नहीं कर रहे हैं सब सीखेंगे दीदी सब एक के बाद एक सब आए हैं संस्कृत की नासा में तो कर चुके हैं बिल्कुल Every major project in Singapore needs a transport impact assessment. Sounds boring, right? It means they actually study how a new road will affect traffic before building it. We build first, create traffic jams, then conduct studies on why there are so many traffic jams. It's not a bug; it's a feature, an employment-boosting feature. Their project safety review process was created after the 2004 Nicoll Highway collapse that killed four people. One accident, four deaths, complete system overhaul. We have bridge collapses that kill dozens every six months. Our response? Oh no! Anyway, Singapore's road budget increased 9.8%. To a total of 14.6 billion dollars in 2024, our road budget also increased, from Swiss accounts to Dubai properties, different kind of growth. The best part: Singapore publishes exactly where every dollar went. Transparent accounts, public access. When Singapore says a road will be completed in 2025, it's completed in 2025. When we say 2025, we mean 2025 is when we'll announce the new completion date of 2030. One country treats infrastructure like infrastructure, the other treats it like an ATM machine. Yes, which one has better roads? So here we are. Singapore builds roads like they're diffusing a bomb. Every millimeter calculated, every angle monitored, every particle of bitumen given a performance review. They have more quality checks than a Gujarati family investigating their daughter's boyfriend. Don't ask how I know. Point being, all this is beautiful, borderline perfection, the best of the best. But is all of this scalable when there are twenty thousand variables that are constantly changing? In India, we've achieved true socialism, not in wealth distribution, fuck no, but in infrastructure suffering. Rich or poor, Ambani or auto rickshaw driver, everybody gets the same pothole experience. Your three crore Mercedes will bottom out on the same crater that swallowed someone's splendor last week. We don't discriminate. Our roads hate everyone equally. But here's the thing. Singapore is playing with cheat codes enabled. They're playing SimCity on easy mode. One city, soft dictatorship governance, no political parties fighting over who inaugurates the road, and six million people. That's it. We have six million people at Dada Station during rush hour. We are playing on nightmare grade difficulty. One point four billion people, twenty eight states, eight union territories, twenty two official languages, sixteen hundred total languages, seven hundred and five ethnic groups. Six major religions, 543 parliamentary constituencies, 5,000 plus cities, 6 lakh plus villages, nine countries as neighbors, more than half of them hostile, and 13 million lane kilometers to maintain. That's 324 trips around the planet worth of road infrastructure. Now I know what some of you are typing right now, but what about the United States? They can do it, can't they? Listen, but they are 250 years old. They have infinite money glitch, and last but not the least, they have the B2. We're not there yet. Sit down. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go check if that pothole outside my gate has been fixed. What was I thinking? What was I even thinking? It hasn't been fixed. It'll never be fixed. If this is the way the universe intended, so be it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. And while you're here, please take a look at our other channel for more serious and in-depth content. Maaki. See you in the next video. Up next, investigators found car. They also found wheels.